Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Today we're going to explore part two of our series with Dr. Charles Tremont on his journey from medicine to metaphysics. Dr. Tremont is a former director of surgery at a hospital in Ohio where he used to live before he moved to Las Vegas where I've known him now for 16 years. He is uh, currently a uh, hypnotherapist he is the author of several books, including From Birth to Rebirth and What's Missing in Medicine. Welcome again, Chuck. Thank you again. Uh, I would encourage our viewers, who, if, if they haven't watched part one of this two-part series, mm -hmm. that they uh, take a look at part one because we covered a lot of ground. I know, I know. Jumped around. We, we've really been talking about a, a journey uh, that you took from being a flight surgeon working with the Air Force to becoming, in effect, an exorcist. Well, it's, it's very interesting, but I, um, I jumped around and... Uh, I, the, when I got to this hypnosis and past life regression stuff, I, th I could see a lot of therapeutic value in that. And uh, it blew my mind when uh, I ran into entities. And mm -hmm. that was that case of Jason where he uh, <laughs> had an earthbound spirit attached to him and I had regressed the spirit instead of him. Uh, but after doing a lot of research, I learned an awful lot about these entities. And I discussed the dark forces in fair detail earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next group is a human group called Earthbound Spirits. As I told you, they decline going to the light for various reasons. Um, but they uh, can cause a lot of problems for the patient. And um, uh, I found some interesting things happen in terms of uh, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. um, I had two lesbian patients over a year's time. And um, uh, they were both in their 20s. And each one of them amazingly had an earthbound spirit attached to them, one when she was two years old and the other one when she was three years old. I get all this information, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, the individuals that attached, the one with the, the attached to her two-year-old, she, she, he was an 18-year-old guy who was killed somehow. And, um, and I asked, I interviewed him, Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and the answers come right through the patient, but I interviewed him and I said, what was your purpose in joining her? And he said, to have fun with her. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the other one, this guy was, the guy was 22 when he died and um, joined her at this, what did I say, three years old. And um, I asked him, what's your purpose? And he said, um, what's, what this one said fun with her, this one said, Fun, have fun through her, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I feel that those are the reasons that uh, these gals were looking towards other gals and becoming homosexual. And then I had a patient who, a young woman who had male life, male life, male life. She had about six male lives in a row, and now she's a female. Mm -hmm. and I think that's a good reason too, because we are kind of like the sum total of all our previous personalities. When she had all those personalities all ahead of her recently then I think that really influenced her, so she's still got to think about women. Mm -hmm. At any rate, um, then there's the, um, the medical community came up with this foreign accent syndrome. Mm -hmm. Patient goes under anesthesia and wakes up speaking a foreign accent. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a whole bunch of these different accents. Well, you, now you've uh, conducted many, many surgeries. You Have you witnessed this? Uh, no, that's very rare. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they said it was only 60 cases. That was years ago that I read that. Yeah. But um, uh, they said it's probably a brain injury, and uh, I say, I'm sorry, I think it's an earthbound spirit. Mm -hmm. And then I've had a lot of patients who've had miscarriages, and I remember some of them, and at that time I didn't know this, but at that time uh, they, I'd see them a week or two after and stuff, and um, they had kind of an irrational fear of things. 
that didn't make sense. Now it makes sense because I would say it's probably a fetal earthbound spirit that attached them. And the fetuses, I've had these little things, little babies in your hand after they abort, and uh, they're moving and mm -hmm. making little noises, and God, it's, it's so heartbreaking. But they're probably very fearful, and mm -hmm. if they join, they probably can transmit that fear to, to the oh, mother. I see. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, but at any rate, the, um, the earthbound spirits uh, are very interesting. Then there's the another human form called soul fragments, and it's when, when a person has a very emotional or physical trauma occur, mm -hmm. part of their soul may fragment, and that fragment may leave and not return, and many times goes into the lower astral plane just like the earthbound spirits do and mm -hmm. find somebody and attach to them. A fragment of a soul. A fragment of a well, soul. Well, I, I know the Egyptians have, for example, <coughs> ten different words for different aspects mm -hmm. of, of the soul. I don't know that an aspect and a fragment are mm -hmm. quite the same. Well, th what they're saying is that there's a portion of that soul that uh, attaches. So what When you say what they're saying, who is they? Well, um, wait a minute. Um, well, let me say, um, the soul fragment leaves and attaches to people, and what we do is we we remove that fragment. And the way I do it is, I tell them look for a silver thread that leads um, uh, away, that silver thread that um, leads away from you, and follow that thread to your original soul. Okay. And when they get there. Um, the soul welcomes and embraces the fragment, uh -huh. gives it a gift uh -huh. of love and security, and uh -huh. and the fragment is given a um, is um, gives a gift to the soul too of lightheartedness. And and this is all reported back to you under hypnosis. And this is called the soul retrieval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm doing all this under hypnosis. Then I ask after I get all the fragments taken care of and they're gone, I ask the spirit guide, "Is this patient that I'm working on been fragmented too?" Yeah. Yes, several times. Mm -hmm. So then we do another retrieval, but it's a little different. I ask them to look for silver threads that lead from you, um, uh, and um, if you see a larger one, follow that and re-experience the trauma that went with that fragmentation. Mm -hmm. And if it happened when you were very young, uh, the subpersonality needs to know that it survived. Kind of thing, and then, and then follow each. Well, just grab each silver thread that you see and pull each one towards you. And when it gets back, you exchange the same gifts. You give the love and security, and receive the lightheartedness. And when it's all completed, the soul retrieval is complete, and the soul is now complete. And when you're a complete soul, you're no less. You're not vulnerable anymore to entity infestation. But when you're fragmented, you're very vulnerable. That's mm -hmm. why they end up getting dark forces and earthbounds and everything else. So if you're traumatized you're, and you've got fragmentation occurring, you're just in trouble. Mm -hmm. There's several things that um, increase your vulnerability. And uh, one is if you're under general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. One is if you're fragmented. Mm -hmm. um, one is if you're using um, really... Um, very deep emotional negative phrases like, you know, if you're enraged, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, you're susceptible to being... You're, uh, you're, you're opening yourself to... to invaded to, by... That's right. Yeah. Earthbound spirits that are looking for a home. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, or, or anything. Okay, and that's the fragments. And then the last is another non-human, kind of like dark forces were non-human, well, now we're talking extraterrestrials. They're non-human. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had many patients who've been abducted, uh, but I, I've also um, run into extraterrestrials who are looking to explore and do research, and they come in and they put implants in people and they may leave and leave those implants, leave or they may come back. But um, usually only one extraterrestrial attaches and the others kind of hover and keep an eye on things. Mm -hmm. um, if I find one that's doing some kind of an experimental thing or whatever, I'll, I'll talk to them. If they are very hostile, I know they have dark forces, and then I'll, we'll do it. The that. extraterrestrials can yeah, be infested and, with that's dark right, forces. That's right, and then I'll have 
spirit guy confirm it, get yeah. rid of them, and all stuff. And then, mm-hmm. then they're much more amenable yeah. and cooperative to leaving and taking their implants and going. Mm-hmm. Then you've got benevolent ones mm-hmm. who hover over you, and they're usually from a planet that you've just started your Earth life because you were on that planet before. Mm-hmm. So you came from that planet to Earth. Yeah. And uh, they will send a group and hover over you and kind of protect you. And that's mm-hmm. and the, so the spirit guy would usually say, "Leave them; they're fine. They're there for protection." Oh, okay. And your approach, if if I understand it correctly, is um, basically when you get this information coming through your patients under hypnosis, unless you think that they are uh, under the control of a dark force who's lying to you, you you will take that information at face value. The spirit guides, I can usually tell if they're legit. And uh, you know, use your intuition, too. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, they're, they're extremely helpful. They're a tremendous shortcut. Mm-hmm. I mean, they answer all these questions. And instead of going through a long, drawn-out situation to get to a past life, I can just ask them, is there a past life that contributed to the patient's mm-hmm. whatever, anxiety, yeah. depression, you name it? Yes, two. Okay, let's go back to the first and the kind of three. One, two, three, boom, we're right there. Well, you know, you give me the impression, and I think you would agree, that that you're 100% convinced. You don't have any doubts in your mind about this world view. And I I would imagine that in order to do the work that you do, that level of uh, 100% belief is essential. Well, you know where it comes from. Tell me. 100% cures. I mean, I have people that are so happy I have people singing all the way home, they said, uh, and it lasts for long periods of time. And if they, and then, um, oh, let me, what, well, let's see, let me do one more extraterrestrial, just to cover that, yeah. is the demonic reptilians. Mm-hmm. And they're more demonic than the dark, powerful dark forces. I don't screw around with them, I just get do an exorcism, get rid of them. Uh, but um, the whole idea here is I give them protection to do to maintain the fact that they will have no foreign energy, okay? And I, I, I give them two things. One I borrowed from Dr. Baldwin. He called it ceiling light meditation. I call it God light visualization. Mm-hmm. I tell them, picture yourself in front of you and see that little spark of God light. It's a, like a golden white violet bright light. Yeah. And see it explode and fill your whole body with this beautiful God light and surround you with a protective shield and do it upon waking in the morning, before each meal, before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. It takes a few seconds. And then I give them an affirmation I picked up from a very sharp guy many years ago. It's three phrases, and the first two phrases are repeated three times, the last phrase once. First phrase is, the light of God never fails. Second phrase, three times. Next phrase is, I live this day in God light. Mm-hmm. Last phrase, the harmony of my true being is my ultimate protection. Mm-hmm. And I know it works because I've had patients loaded with all kinds of stuff, come back two, three years later. Mm-hmm. And if they were consistent doing their their protections, still no foreign energy. Others that didn't do it very well or didn't do it at all loaded again. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a pretty good idea yeah. it works. Has, has there ever been any independent verification of the effectiveness of this therapy? Independent verification. Well, I mean, normally when a therapist comes and says, I'm 100% successful with all of my clients, well, I would much, think the I mean, therapist is, has some self interest in saying that. Well, yeah, I suppose. But, uh, I, I'm most, That's the advantage of having an independent evaluation. Yeah. Well, I was more interested in just helping people as much as I can. And yeah. uh, it, obviously, the things I'm doing are working, but the spirit guide is such a tremendous shortcut. And ABLE is another added shortcut. Mm-hmm. And the dual hypnosis is a beautiful shortcut, Let's too. Let's talk about the dual put, hypnosis. Put them all together. You haven't mentioned dual hypnosis. Well, okay. Um, the dual hypnosis, I did, I did oh, mention. Oh, yes, yeah. with the mother and daughter. Yes. That's when I, st- I first got the whole mm-hmm. uh, proof to me it, it works. Yeah. And I've, since then, we've done many people uh, after they, we couldn't get a guide and we couldn't get ABLE. And then we did a duel the following whatever appointment we had, mm-hmm. and um, and it worked beautifully. And these people are so happy that they're they're able to get rid of their their particular problems. Mm-hmm. Now I'm um, I was very excited about the fact that you, we have an answer to all these things. You know, I mean, and the guide was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And 
speaking to the guide, and, and then I find out you got to be careful because it could be dark force pretending. But uh, I would the dark, the straight dark forces. If they if they pretend, it's real obvious. But the powerful ones are tricky, and sometimes they can split, and half of them will leave, and half of them will still be there. But the spirit guide will know about these things, so that's what screws them up. Mm -hmm. But I, I love the fact that we're able to. Um, cure these people. And what happens is that the, um, the person's subconscious mind is uh, able to show the person's conscious mind mm -hmm. that the underlying cause of their problem is curable and, um, and we're able to by showing, in other words, we're showing that, that the, sub, the subconscious lets the conscious mind know that this is the cause of the problem, and by your conscious mind understanding fully that this is the cause of the problem, is able to release the effect. Mm -hmm. And bingo, these people are cured. Mm -hmm. And that's if it has to do with that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. whether, it's, does it whether it's entities or the other. Does it require that your patients enter into this belief system? Um, not necessarily. They're just happy to be cured. Mm -hmm. did, did I? How much more time do we have in well, this session? Oh, we have ten minutes. Okay. Uh, remember, I mentioned to you before when we weren't on film here the karmic monkey wrench. Yes. Okay. Well, that's an interesting situation. Um, that's what I call the entities. Mm -hmm. And the reason I call that is they are a karmic monkey wrench that's been thrown into the doctrines of reincarnation and karma. And the doctrines are very simple. You have free will, you're responsible for what you do, you create your own reality, and you can never be a victim. Mm -hmm. Throw in the entities, the monkey wrench, <laughs> your free will's interfered with. You may not uh, be responsible for what you're doing, and you may not be creating your own reality, and yeah, you can be a victim. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you have, to, you have to consider both of these causes, yeah. but the two causes together are pretty much all the causes. Mm -hmm. Now, you've used the term the subconscious mind. Yeah. And I know it's part of the subtitle of your book, What's Missing in Medicine. You refer again to the subconscious That's mind. That's right. Yeah, it's a, unleashing the healing power of the subconscious mind. What happens is the subconscious, uh, in a, if something in your present life triggers a memory from a past life, your subconscious brings that up. Mm -hmm. And now it's stored in the subconscious but it programs your conscious mind in a very negative way, and you're suffering, but you have no idea why, mm -hmm. until you're shown by the subconscious what the scoop is, yeah. and that's where the hypnosis comes in. Well, would you say that these entities are, in effect, part of the subconscious mind? No. Why do you say that? Well, I, because you brought the term up. I'm just and, and, no, they, and many people who are in your profession, in the medical profession, would say this is all the subconscious mind. Well, they're they're involved, yeah. Whatever you want. I mean, you know, that's that's the last cause. Being able to come up with names for all these different areas and yeah. and how they interact with each other. But I know that um, they can program the conscious mind in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. But once the subconscious is used with its healing power, it can show the conscious mind what the heck the problem is, mm -hmm. and that uh, we're able to understand it make a distinction of time, like, oh, man, that happened a long time ago. Why am I suffering? And release the effect. Mm -hmm. That's really good stuff, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and um, I'm, I'm trying to give this message out to everybody I can because before I leave this earth, I'd like other people to be able to be healed, and other guys can do what I do. Yeah. It can be a retired physician. It can be a nurse. It can be a therapist. It can be mm -hmm. anybody. Well, you're practicing as a, as a retired physician. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, I have to say, I do know that there are more than one case of licensed psychologists losing their licenses for uh, engaging in this kind of practice because the uh, behavioral science boards oh, and, yeah, and the right. medical boards uh, yeah, right. consider, consider it quackery. Yeah. Well, I consider <laughs> I consider it uh, a good situation that you're able to heal people who cannot be healed with conventional stuff, and uh, I don't see a problem in that at all. I mean, you're working 
in in their subconscious mind and you're uh, delving into the causes of their problem and the two causes are past lives or entities and at least that's how I found and these fooled me because I thought it was all past lives mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the yeah. karmic monkey wrench came in mm -hmm. and um, it's real stuff and reincarnation is real I'm sorry in that, that case that I told you about that was unbelievable mm -hmm. but I've been able to um, have so many lives that uh, I've seen and um, they're um, they're unbelievable mm -hmm. uh, well I, I do know this, and uh, I don't want to harp on it much, but the uh, enormous body of research on reincarnation initiated by Ian Stevenson at the University of Virginia and is still ongoing. Uh, thousands of cases are uh, well documented of young children mm -hmm. who, who recall past lives. But these researchers are very, uh, I have to say, frankly hostile to the whole field of hypnotic regression therapy because they, they think that uh, it may be a valid form of psychotherapy but they don't consider it a valid form of uh, reincarnation research. Uh, that's the only way you can do reincarnation research as far as I could see. Yeah. Uh, I don't buy into that um, their story there. That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Well their, their concern has to do with the uh, possibility that the hypnotherapist is uh, planting suggestions. No, I uh, I get everything from the patient, mm -hmm. and it all comes from the patient. So does the spirit guide come from the patient, and uh, uh, and under deep hypnosis, uh, it's amazing what you can come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can take people into future lives too, which is interesting. Yeah. I, um, oh, I got to tell you, <laughs> you have a few more minutes here? Yes, yes okay. we do. I got to tell you, well, one of the cases I was going to later on tell you about, but this has to do with my wife, because mm -hmm. I've taken her back to about 90 lifetimes. 90? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah uh, your, but, your wife, but Nancy, was, who's a good friend of oh, mine. Oh, yes, but uh -huh. uh, she was a newspaper reporter um, in uh, the 40s for mm -hmm. a Pittsburgh newspaper. And um, she, um, as I advanced, it was a he in that life. His name was uh, Edward Johnson, I think. As I advanced him in that life, I said, where are you now? I said, I'm in New York. I said, what are you doing in New York? He said, I'm watching a very important game. Well, a baseball game. My antenna goes up. Mm -hmm. And um, why is it so important? Because the manager, um, the Brooklyn Dodgers have a new manager this year. What year is it? 1947. Mm-hmm. And then I learn um, at, um, I'm trying to think of the, the manager that was there. Leo DeRocher. Leo DeRocher. And he was there from 39 to 46, mm -hmm. and then 48. He wasn't there in 47. Oh. And when I, but I didn't know that initially, and I read up and stuff, and it says um, he was. Um, the manager actually for all these years, but in 1947 he was seen with known gamblers and suspended for that year. <laughs> so, but you know what's yeah. funny? My wife doesn't care about baseball worth a dang, yeah. and but she has to watch the World Series every year. Mm -hmm. She doesn't care who's playing, who's winning. She just watches it, and I'm sure it's from that lifetime. <laughs> I'm telling you, these things you know they they, they affect us. It's, mm -hmm. it's a riot. Um, and then, <coughs> and then there was another one, a deja vu that she had in Segovia, Spain. Well, well, well but why? Uh, what was it about that lifetime that would cause her to continue to watch the World Series? Because she was a, a sports reporter, and obviously it was a very uh -huh. important thing to Edward Johnson yeah. in those years. And he ended up drowning on a, on a ship uh, after. But uh, and she always worries about drowning and stuff, and anyway, mm. this kind of thing. But she had a she had a deja vu in Segovia, Spain, in the Alcazar, mm -hmm. uh, Ferdinand Isabella's courtyard in that castle. And uh, she, um, I took her back and she went back, and uh, mind, mind you, my wife was raised Baptist, mm -hmm. and she went back to meet a little Spanish girl named Marcela Alvarez who had visions of the Blessed Mother in that courtyard. Mm -hmm. The Baptists don't get involved with the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. 
and doesn't make any difference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but it's just amazing how this all stuff works. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I get a bit of just a, a kick out of how the it, all these lives do have an effect on you somewhere somehow you know kind of thing, mm -hmm. and some people more than others obviously, but I think you are the total personality from all these lifetimes that you've had. Well, I don't know that there's any limit if the soul is immortal. Uh, and, and we may remember, have infinite many past lives. And remember, lives. the way I understand the whole yep. process of reincarnation is you choose these lifetimes to learn lessons so you can join the Creator again. Mm -hmm. And the lessons are what make up the whole lifetime. I had a guy get real upset with me. Yeah. I jumped up uh, in front of my desk and said, why would I choose my parents? They molested me. Huh? And I said, you know what, you got to step back and look at the big picture. And just maybe one of the lessons you need to learn was forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And you worked your life around so you could come up with these lessons. An opportunity to yeah, experience it's, it's a, it's, forgiveness. It's a, it's a hard concept yeah. for a lot of people, it really is. Mm -hmm. But at any rate. <laughs> well, Dr. Charles Trayman, I can imagine that many of our viewers are going to have a very tough time <laughs> with, with this conversation. Um, I do myself well, at, at, at times, but I think it's important that people realize there, there are many different ways of uh, looking at the world. So I want to thank you for sharing your perspective with me. I just want you to know I've seen a lot of people. Yeah, I know you People have. from every state and union and uh -huh. almost every country. That's uh -huh. crazy, but that's true. It's a big interest. Thank you for being with me, Chuck. Well, thank you again, Jeffrey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> guy. And thank you for being with us. Thank you.